a picture of Dorian Gray. So since I've referenced Dorian Gray and Lord Henry as the man who likes to let go of a lot of existential knowledge and random thoughts that he has about life, I decided to do something a little bit different. I decided to read a couple of passages in reference to a movie that I've just uploaded. It's kind of neat. I thought you guys might enjoy it. and, and uh, is as much as I do reading it because I really love to read. I really love to read out loud so I figured why not make a video expressing kind of the thoughts that would be related to this video that I've just previously uploaded called The Beaver in which I referenced Lord Henry as a character that reminded me of the puppet Beaver. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this video and I'm gonna start it right now. This comes from page 55 and Lord Henry is talking to Dorian Gray about Basil. Now Basil is the artist who has painted Dorian Gray's picture and Basil is very enamored with Dorian Gray. Lord Henry and Dorian Gray have kind of formed a bond, a kind of friendship, which is not very akin to who Basil is as a person. He's not very social, he's not very into all of these like Dorian Gray and Lord Henry kind of talk about people like like two old hens and Dorian Gray has fallen in love with a lady named Sybil Vale so here we are we're entering the scene where Lord Henry and Dorian Gray are talking about Basil and Lord Henry seems to pop some knowledge about what he thinks about who people are and onward we go. Basil, my dear boy, puts everything that is charming into him, into his work. The consequence is that he has nothing left for life but his prejudices, his principles, and his common sense. The only artists I've ever known who are personally delightful are bad artists. Good artists exist simply in what they make and consequently are perfectly uninteresting in what they are. A great poet, a really great poet, is the most unpoetical of all creatures. But inferior poets are absolutely fascinating. The worse their rhymes are, the more picturesque they look. The mere fact of having published a book of second-rate sonnets makes the man quite irresistible. He lives in the poetry that he cannot write. The others write poetry that they dare not realize. I wonder is that really so, Harry, said Dorian Gray putting some perfume on his handkerchief out of a large gold-topped bottle that stood on the table. It must be if you say it. And now I am off. Imogen is waiting for me. Don't forget about tomorrow. Goodbye. As he left the room, Lord Henry's heavy eyelids drooped and he began to think, certainly a few people had ever interest in so much as Dorian Gray. And yet the lad's mad adoration of someone else caused him not the slightest pang of annoyance or jealousy. He was pleased by it. It made him a more interesting study. He had been always enthralled by the methods of natural science, but the ordinary subject matter of science had seemed to him trivial and of no import. And so he had begun by vivisecting himself, as he had ended by vivisecting others. Human life, that appeared to him the one thing worth investigating, compared it to there with nothing else of any value. It was true that as one watched life in its curious crucible of pain and pleasure, one could not wear over one's face a mask of glass, nor keep the sulfurous fumes from troubling the brain and making the imagination turbid with monstrous fancies and misshapen dreams. There were poisons so subtle that to know their properties one had to sicken of them. There were maladies so strange that one had to pass through them if one sought to understand their nature. And yet, what a great reward one received! How wonderful the whole world became to one! To note the curious hard logic and the emotional colored life of the intellect, ordinary people waited till life disclosed to them its secrets, but to few. To the elect, the mysteries of life were revealed before the veil was drawn away. Sometimes this was the effect of art, and chiefly of the art of literature, which dealt immediately with the passions of the intellect. But now and then a complex personality took the place and assumed the office of art, and was indeed in its way a real work of art. 
life having its elaborate masterpieces, just as poetry has, or sculpture or painting. Yes, the lad was premature. He was gathering his harvest while it was yet spring. The pulse and passion of youth were in him, but was becoming self-conscious. It was delightful to watch him with his beautiful face and his beautiful soul. He was a thing to wonder at. It was no matter how it all ended or was destined to end. He was like one of those gracious figures in a pageant or a play whose joys seem to be remote from one, but whose sorrows stir one's sense of beauty and whose wounds are like red roses. Soul and body, body and soul, how mysterious they were. There was an animalism in the soul and the body had its moments of spirituality. <laughs> Who could say where the fleshly impulse ceased or the physical impulse began? How shallow were the arbitrary definitions of ordinary psychologists, and yet how difficult to decide between the claims of various schools. Was the shadow of a soul seated in the house of sin, or was the body really in a soul? The separation of spirit from matter was a mystery, and the union of spirit with matter was also a mystery. He began to wonder whether he could ever make psychology so absolute a science that each little spring of life would be revealed to us. As it was, we were always misunderstood ourselves, and rarely understood others. Experience was no ethical value, it was merely the name that men gave to their mistakes. Moralists had, as a rule, regarded it as a mode of warning, had claimed it for certain and ethical efficacy in the formation of character, had praised it as something that taught us to follow and showed us what to avoid. And there was no motive power in experience. It was as little of an active cause as conscious itself. All that it really demonstrated was that our future would be the same as our past and that sin we had done once, and with loathing we would do many times, and with joy. Those were passages from a picture of Dorian Gray, the character that was speaking, or the thought process of the character that was speaking was Lord Henry, and he's kind of speaking about his thoughts pertaining to Dorian Gray and how he might be experiencing life through his revelatory um, ideas that have been shown to him via Lord Henry. So he's kind of thinking about how Dorian Gray might be viewing life with his new found perspective on life via Lord Henry, who's been popping his magic madness to him, kind of opening his eyes to beauty and maybe the kind of salty and not so sunny and innocent side of life. But this character, Lord Henry, kind of reminds me of the character that Mel Gibson, the puppet that Mel Gibson has picked up and is now kind of expressing himself through the beaver. So to me, the beaver was kind of like Lord Henry and I decided to share more, a, a, a couple of Lord Henry's thoughts from this book that is completely awesome. If you haven't had the chance to read it, I would suggest that you do because the language is very funny and, you know, it's kind of a dark book, but, you know, it's a classic. And so if you appreciate kind of dark humor and intellectual revelations and kind of existential thoughts pertaining to life and all of those things, and I would suggest that you pick up the book or I'd say pick up the book first because the book really essentially is better than the beaver. <laughs> and until the next time, you guys have a really really good one and pick up a book or if you have read books that are comparable to the picture of Dorian Gray and maybe characters that have these dark revelatory explanations about the way life should be please leave them down in the comments below I would love to read them if you enjoyed this video be sure to give the video a like if you didn't like it be sure to give it a dislike Either one, pick your pleasure, pick your poison, it's fine. And until the next time, if you're into reading it, then you should do that too.